I was the girl that was backstage when the supers were probably passing a little flask and I would have been like, oh yeah, I'm thirsty. And they would have been over your head, you can have water. That was me. I didn't get champagne, certainly forget any drugs. Do you need Tylenol, honey? Hi, Bustle, I'm Kamorley Simmons and these are the moments that made me. Late 1980s. I was probably 13 years old, I think. I actually was discovered at a convention in Kansas City, Missouri. I was like Dorothy from Kansas, for sure, like Toto and Ruby Red Slippers. And they took me to Paris. And my first casting was Chanel. I was the youngest girl in the history of Chanel to this day. Now you can't even do that as young as we started. I was 12 or 13. It was about who was the next big person for Carl Lagerfeld. For Carl, that was me. And he said, this girl is the face of the 21st century, which now I realize lasts quite a long time. My first show was haute couture, not ready to wear, not prepped. It was like painstakingly sewn for hours. Like, Don't touch it, <laughs> like this. I'm, I'm sure I was crying. If you look up close, I'm for sure I was crying. I could barely walk. In my opinion, I walked like Humpty Dumpty, like not like the most elegant, you know, swan, more like a little ugly duckling. So now we're in the 90s, and it was such an iconic time. It was the time of the supermodels. I am not a supermodel. I would have been a child then. Supers are like a group of like, I don't know, six people. We would have to make the list. So I consider myself like a top model. You know, that was when they were like, we don't get out of bed for less than $15,000 a day. I was getting out of bed then for like three. <laughs> I've done you know, every major show, like Yves Saint Laurent, John Franco Ferre, Giorgio Armani, Valentino. By the late 90s, I was probably looking for the exit door. And I was still very, very young, but I couldn't believe that I was in a business that was so superficial, that you come to work and it's like, oh my God, you are so beautiful, you are everything, and tomorrow you might not be. And I wanted to give something else to fashion. And so that was the time that I was starting Baby Fat and I learned from Carl Agrafal that your way is as good a way as anybody else's way. They don't know what the hell they're doing either. I created a brand that just became synonymous with multicultural. For me, this was like a way to have my own runway, my own opening to the world. And I took a whole culture with me, maybe a little bit outcast at times. They were women and men and boys of all um, colors of the rainbow. They look like you, they look like us. Like I dressed Madonna's tour, Beyonce to Britney Spears, to the first lady, probably to the president. No, the president wasn't wearing baby fat, but he might've been wearing fat farm. We don't know. I was the first, I think, designer with their own Barbie doll. And that was already hard, finding those lips, that kind of nose, something more muddled of the complexion. I had my little dog. So my dog is a Barbie dog, I had a Barbie. And the clothes were, I think, Baby Fat or Kimora Lee Simmons at the time. So we understood the assignment. Life in the Fat Plane was among the first reality shows, so we came right after the Osbournes. But our show was a little bit different in that it actually took you into the world of fashion. It's moving around with the crew and they're catching all of these moments. And for us, it was always like deadlines, fashion, everything running crazy, beautiful girls running everywhere, clothes flying. Like, I don't know, were there cat fights behind the scene? Maybe a little bit, not too much. I don't think we were too catty. I had little kids. I was probably catty than my husband. He deserved it. Probably all through my life, philanthropy has been an, a you know recurring theme for us. My girls are young adults, and when they call me like after having a tough day or a bout of depression, or mom, what do I do? What do I do? The answer is always to give back. Go and do something for someone else. You have members of your family, members of your community that don't feel well. Take someone something. They're sick. They're suffering, and right away like that, it brings you out. So now, fast forward to current time. I have five kids. They're like active members of society and community. So now we're here, the relaunch of Baby Fat. It's come full circle to have a brand that's 20 something or 30 years old. That's a legacy brand founded by me and now my kids have it. And so I really think it's in the family, you know, forever. Yeah, to be able to sit here and kind of, you know, recap all of that and still to be considered young. I think that's what life is all about. Like that vivaciousness, is that a word? Vivaciousness, yeah.